Hello and welcome to the last video of the Excel VBA tutorial for beginners. In this video we'll talk about the types of errors that you may encounter while coding VBA. There are basically four types of errors. And then we will see what the bagging tools are available. We'll go through this list here. And finally, how to anticipate and react to the runtime errors using error handling in your code. Language or syntax errors are typos or missing components in the VBA code. So for example, you miss a dot or a parenthesis or type the wrong name or an object wrongly typed. Um, these errors lead to one of the other two types, a compile error or a runtime error. And sometimes they are immediately highlighted while you're typing, but sometimes they aren't. So let's move to the Visual Basic Editor and see some examples. So for example, if we write range instead of range a1.select, initially VV8 doesn't say anything, but that typo leads to a compile error. So if we run the macro, then it shows and it selects the syntax and enters what is called a break mode. We're going to see more about that in a moment. And it highlights in yellow the first line of the sub procedure. So Compile errors occur when VVA cannot understand a statement correctly, usually due to some incorrect code instructions or expressions or, or a, a syntax error, like in this case. If we miss the double quotations or the parentheses, then it's immediately highlighted in red when we move to the next line. And it shows also the compile error message, which gives you some information, so that's quite helpful. However, if you don't want to see that message every time, you can go here to Tools, Options, and untick the Auto Syntax check. I'm going to leave it on. Now, if we write select instead of select, and we run it, this typo generates another type of error. That's a runtime error. So it did not see anything wrong while compiling the code, but then breaks while running the macro. And if we click the back, it highlights that line in yellow and enters the break mode. So on the other hand, the runtime errors occur during macro code execution due to VVA instructions impossible to run. These type of errors must be predicted and anticipated in the code through error handling. We'll talk about that later. Let me show you another example. If we just write active sheet and nothing else, and we run it, it prompts a compile error and says, Invalid use of property. We should have a property or method, for example, uh, select. But see this other example. Instead of active sheet, we miss a letter uh, and we write it like this. So if we run it, this causes a runtime error. In this case, it started running the macro while before it was just compiling. It didn't run a single line. These typos are sometimes difficult to avoid. You can use lowercase and make sure that it capitalizes whatever object, method, properties you are using. In that way you see it was correct. Let me show you yet another example of a runtime error. Sub block name. So the first thing it clears the cells, active sheet cells clear, and we write in cell A1 active sheet range A1 value block name, that's the title. Then we have a variable, my block, Excel macro class, block spot. And we declare that variable, of course, then my block as a string. And then here we say, if my block is not empty, then active sheet range A2 dot value, we're going to add here my block. But let's say we forgot to add the end if statement. So if we forget to add the end diff statement and we run it, we get a compile error. It says block if without end diff. That's exactly right. And it highlights in yellow the first line. It didn't run any line of the code. So let's add end if. And however, if we forget to add the value here, my block, and we run it, then we get a runtime error. But as you see, it ran this line and this line here, so the title was added, until here. So that hopefully clarifies the difference between compile and runtime errors. And finally, the last type of error is 
program logic errors, which do not necessarily generate any error message, but nevertheless render erroneous results due to misleading or not well-defined instructions. This could be a not fully qualified or correct object referencing or incorrect condition statements, etc. So here, a simple example of this would be if we change the condition instead of different, we put equal and that will not add that value now. So there's not an error, but that could have been a mistake in the logic. Now let's see what's debugging. Debugging is the process of finding and removing those errors. VBA offers a number of debugging tools that help identify potential flaws in the code and therefore avoid errors. You can find some of the tools here in the debug folder. Some other are here under view. Or you can also add the debug tab here if you wish. These include the play, pause or break, and a stop or reset buttons here. We've been using the play button many times throughout this tutorial to run a macro. The pause will break the code execution and enter break mode. And the stop button resets the macro, so it resets the value of the variables too. The break mode is what prompts when choosing the debug option from a runtime error message box, as we've seen earlier. Then, the VBA editor highlights in yellow the line of code where it breaks or where there was an error. So again, if we have a typo that generates a compile error here and run it, when clicking the back, highlights for a compile error the SAP. But if it's a runtime error, it highlights the line of code that causes the error. So that's the break mode. A step into allows to run the code line by line each at a time and enters break mode. It can be run by clicking a step into here or pressing F8. This is very helpful to run a macro step by step and see what happens. So in this example, if we step into, we see how things are happening step by step. First, it clears the sheet, adds the block name title, assigns the name to that variable, checks if empty and adds the block name to cell A2. Another possibility is to use toggle breakpoints. This can be inserted by clicking toggle breakpoint under the debug tab in the VBA editor or here in the edit toolbar or pressing F9. So let's add a toggle here and as you see it clears the sheet, adds the title in A1 and but breaks before this line. So it didn't add the name yet and enters the break mode. Another very useful tool is the locals window. It shows the value and type of all variables or expressions for a given procedure while the macro is running. It can be very helpful in combination with the step into command to show changes to the values of variables throughout the code. Let's show the locals window. I usually have it down here and step into the macro pressing F8. We see my block type is a string and the value is empty, or double quotations. If we keep stepping into, at this point, the value changes. If we have a variable declared at the module level, for example, post count as integer, it also shows here, if we click the plus button and unfold module one as, and it shows as empty. Or if we have an object variable, for example, my range as range, then it shows also here and nothing. But if we assign an object, let's say set my range equals range A2, and we use it here, my range dot value equals my block, then when we reach that line, the locals window shows the different properties for that object variable. This is very helpful when working with arrays, for example. We've seen a bit of that in part seven of this tutorial when talking about arrays. Then we have the watch window, which also shows the value and type of variables or expressions that have previously been added to a watch in the BVA project. So that's here. And for example, let's add my range to the watch and just as watch expression. It's gonna watch my range and it shows here. So it shows the same as the locals window, but just for that variable specifically. And we could say, let's edit the watch and say break when value changes. 
So then if we run the macro, it breaks here. And finally, the immediate window allows to execute code on the fly just by entering any VBA statements and pressing enter. This can be useful to test some basic statements without having to run or step into the macro. For example, we can add a new worksheet on the fly, worksheets.add, and here's the new worksheet. Or we can get the address of the selection in a message box. So I select this, and then we write message box selection.address, and here it is. And we can also get the value directly in the immediate window using the question mark preceding the statement. So if I add this here, we get the address right here in the MIDI window. We can also write values during macro execution using the debug print function from within the VVA code. That can be useful to track progress and check if information is being processed correctly without halting the macro execution. So in this example, we could add here after the variable debug print len my block, and when running the macro, we get the value here. So that's the length of the string. Or, for example, down here, debug print my range dot row, and there we go. Finally, we're going to talk about error handling. Error handling is a piece of code that anticipates and reacts to runtime errors. It should be included whenever the program interacts with the user or other components of the computer. The on error statement enables error handling in VBA programming. It must precede the code that is anticipated to generate an error. There are three possible reactions to an error with the on error statement. The first is on error go to a label. Let's see an example. We are getting the employee ID through an input box. Dim amp ID as an integer, and then amp ID equals the input box, enter employee ID. Now, if user does not enter a number, it generates an error because amp ID is declared as an integer. It can, of course, be declared as a variant, but we want to make sure the user enters a proper number. So then we use an error here on error go to error handler, and we exit the sub here. And then we put the label over there, error handler, and with a message box, invalid ID. If we run it, and we don't put a number, it jumps to the error handler. Otherwise, if we have a number, it works. We can also use on error resume next, which ignores errors and moves to the next line without causing any interruption to the code execution. This is useful when we anticipate an error, but we don't want to do anything about it and just avoid the code breaking. So we could put it here and comment all that so it does not generate an error if user does not enter a number. And finally, on error go to zero, we'll disable any previously set error handling within the current procedure. So after this, we could have on error go to zero, and then the macro continues. So, and that was it for errors and debugging. And for this Excel VBA tutorial for beginners, I hope it was helpful and I encourage you to keep learning. I'll be uploading more videos and you have plenty of resources in my blog. Thanks for watching.